Something huge just happened at Starbase, and it's got people asking some big questions. A massive aircraft carrier, one of the largest in history, just passed by SpaceX's launch site. But why? Could SpaceX use a ship like this for Starship landings, or even launches? This could change everything. And that's not all NASA's Viper rover, once at risk of cancellation, is making a big comeback. Plus, China is pushing private companies to help support its space station, making the competition even more intense, because this is going to be a wild ride. Let's start with the biggest mystery. On February 2nd, something unexpected happened. A massive aircraft carrier sailed right past SpaceX's Starbase facility. But this wasn't just any ship. It was the USS John F. Kennedy, a legendary aircraft carrier that served for over 40 years. And guess what? It was heading to the port of Brownsville to be scrapped. Now, at first glance, this might not seem like a big deal, but hold on. This got a lot of people thinking. Could SpaceX use something like this in the future? A carrier this size could potentially be used for Starship landings, launch operations, or even transportation. Let's break down why this is such an interesting idea. First, let's talk about landings. Right now, SpaceX is working on catching Starship and Super Heavy with the massive Mechazilla Tower at Starbase. But what if they had a sea-based landing platform? This could solve a lot of problems. If Starship could land on a carrier-sized platform, it would have a huge impact on reusability. Think about Falcon 9 landings. SpaceX already uses drone ships to land boosters in the ocean. A larger platform could do the same for Starship. With the size of the USS John F. Kennedy, you could potentially land multiple Starships at once. That would be game-changing. But there's a catch. SpaceX has been moving away from landing legs in favor of catching Starship with mechanical arms. Could they adapt that system to work at sea? Maybe. They'd need a stable platform, but with the right engineering, it could be possible. And if they do add landing legs back, this kind of floating platform would make even more sense. Now let's go even bigger. What about launching Starship from a sea-based platform? We know SpaceX has already explored this idea. They even bought two oil rigs a few years ago for offshore launches before ultimately selling them. But what if instead of oil rigs, they used something even larger, like a modified aircraft carrier? This could have major advantages. First, launching from the ocean would reduce noise and shockwave risks near populated areas. Second, it would give SpaceX flexibility to launch from different locations without worrying about land-based restrictions. And third, it could make international launches easier. Imagine launching Starship from international waters without needing permission from any specific country. Of course, this would require some serious modifications. A launch platform needs fuel storage, a flame trench, and strong infrastructure. But if SpaceX is serious about long-term Mars missions, offshore launches could become a big part of the equation. One more possibility, using a ship like this for Starship transportation. Right now, SpaceX has two main launch locations, Starbase in Texas and Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If they needed to move Starships between these sites, a large carrier-style transport could help. We already know that Starship V3 will be even taller, potentially 150 meters high. Moving such a massive rocket by land could be challenging. A sea-based transport system could be a creative solution. It wouldn't be the first time SpaceX has used ships to transport hardware, so why not Starship? All right, let's switch gears to NASA's Viper rover, because this story took a surprising turn. A few months ago, it looked like this mission might be canceled due to budget concerns. But now, NASA is fighting to keep it alive. And they're doing something completely new. On February 3rd, NASA announced that they're looking for commercial partners to help land and operate the rover. This means a private company will be responsible for getting Viper to the moon and making sure it works properly. This is a huge deal. NASA usually runs these kinds of missions themselves, but now they're opening the door for more commercial involvement. And guess what? 
SpaceX could be a top contender. With Falcon Heavy already planned to launch lunar missions, this could be the perfect match. So what's so special about Viper? This rover is designed to explore the moon's south pole and search for water ice. That's critical for NASA's Artemis program, which is focused on building a long-term human presence on the moon. If Viper finds enough water ice, it could pave the way for moon bases, and eventually, missions to Mars. Now let's talk about China, because they're making big moves in commercial space and flight. For the first time, China is allowing private companies to help resupply its Tiangong space station. Two cargo spacecraft, Haolong and Qingzhou, will be launched using rockets from private Chinese companies. This is a direct challenge to the U.S. and companies like SpaceX. Remember when NASA retired the space shuttle and turned to private companies like SpaceX for resupply missions? Well, China is now doing the same thing. But there's one big difference. China's private space companies have been accused of copying existing rocket designs. Some of their rockets look strikingly similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. If these private missions succeed, China will have a full-scale commercial space industry competing directly with the U.S. and SpaceX. And that raises a big question. How will the U.S. respond? Will NASA expand its partnerships with private companies even further? And will SpaceX accelerate its own plans to dominate the commercial space market? So, let's recap. Could we see Starship landing or launching from a carrier in the future? The idea isn't as crazy as it sounds. While SpaceX hasn't confirmed any plans, they've already explored offshore launch sites before. A sea-based platform could solve a lot of challenges, and it might just be the key to making Starship's ambitious reusability plans work. Meanwhile, NASA's Viper rover is back on track, and commercial partnerships could make the mission even more exciting. And in China, private space companies are stepping up in a big way, setting the stage for the next phase of global space competition. What do you think? Would a sea-based launch and landing platform make sense for Starship? Will NASA's Viper rover find water on the moon? And is China's private space sector a real threat to SpaceX? As the space industry accelerates toward a new era of exploration, these developments highlight the growing competition and innovation shaping the future. SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of technology, while NASA's Viper rover demonstrates the resilience of lunar exploration efforts. Meanwhile, China's expanding commercial space sector signals a shift in global space dynamics. With each breakthrough, the landscape of spaceflight is evolving, setting the stage for even more ambitious missions. The question now is, what will be the next game-changing moment in space exploration? Don't forget to hit that like button, smash subscribe for more jaw-dropping space updates, and join us as we embark on a cosmic journey like never before.